Hello, men and women of science. This is Mr. Cochran here to give you some help with writing names and formulas of ionic compounds. In this first video, we're going to just cover some of the basics of writing names and formulas, so let's get started. When you begin this video, make sure that you have your notebook with you so that you can take good notes. Make sure that you have a periodic table with ion charges written in, and make sure that you've gone over your ions to memorize that we've been working on over the last few weeks. Your periodic table should look similar to this with the ion charges written in, and remember that our non-metal ions all end in IDE, nitride, phosphide, oxide, selenide, etc. Your ions to memorize are in this list right here. Knowing these ions will greatly help you write names and formulas and recognize the anions and cations that you see in ionic compounds. Ionic compounds contain charged particles called cations and anions. The cations are positive and those are made of metals or ammonium. The anions are negative and contain nonmetals. And when we write formulas, the total positive charges from cations will always equal the total negative charges from anions. That's to say the compounds will be neutral. And when we write names and formulas, the cations always come first. So let's start with writing names of ionic compounds, and it's a pretty straightforward process. The first thing you do is identify the cation, and as I said, that's going to be a metal or ammonium, and you'll write its name. You'll identify the anion, remember that contains nonmetals, and you'll write its name. So they each have two ions, they each will have two names. Remember that cations are metals, which you see highlighted here in green, or ammonium. And the nonmetals here are highlighted in red, and our anions will contain nonmetals. Our first ionic compound has a group 2 metal, that's magnesium, and our nonmetal ion is chloride, so the name is simply magnesium chloride. Our next example has a group 1 metal, this is sodium. Our anion here is a polyatomic ion, that's sulfate, that's from our list to memorize, so the name of this compound is simply sodium sulfate. Our third compound has two of our polyatomic ions in it. This is our only positive polyatomic ion, ammonium. And the second part is our phosphite ion, so this compound is ammonium phosphite. So pretty simple, two ions, two names, you just need to be able to identify them. Time to practice. In a moment, you'll pause the video and write down these ions and then identify them and write down their correct names. You can start the video after pausing and see if you've written the names correctly. Be sure to check your spelling, especially those last three letters. Go ahead and pause the video now. So here's the correct names of these ionic compounds. Make sure that you check to see that you've done them correctly. If you're having trouble, go back over and review your ions or the first part of this video or see a teacher for help. Next, we're going to learn how to write formulas for ionic compounds, and it's also a pretty straightforward process. Once you've identified the cation, you're going to write down its formula with its charge. You're going to identify the anion and write its formula with its charge. And then you're going to add cations or anions until the total positive charges are equal to the total negative charges. That is to say, we've made a neutral compound. Then you're going to write the formula using subscripts to show the number of cations and anions that you've added together to reach that net charge of zero. So here we go. Our first compound has a group 2 metal, you'll find it there, and that has a 2 plus charge, barium is Ba2 plus. Our nonmetal is selenide, Se2 minus, that's in group 16, and you'll notice that our two charges already add up to zero, and so we can go ahead and write the formula now. This gives us a good base to start with because we have one of each, BASE. And also notice that when we only have one of each, we don't write ones as subscripts. So our formula is just BASE. Our next compound has a group 13 metal in it. That's gallium with a 3 plus charge. Oxide is O with a 2 negative charge. And these charges don't add to zero. They add to plus 1. So I'm going to add more negative charge here by adding another oxide ion. 
Now our charges add up to negative one, so I gotta keep going here. I need more positive charge. I'm gonna add another gallium. And now I have plus six and minus four. That adds up to two plus, and we can fix that by adding a third oxide here. And now my total positive charges and my total negative charges are the same. Another strategy you can use here is to find a common multiple of three and two, and that happens to be six. Two gallium give me plus six, and three oxides give me minus six, and I'm ready to write the formula. Those charges do add up to zero, so here we go. Two gallium and three oxides are written this way, and my formula is Ga2O3. Our final example contains a polyatomic ion with the group 13 metal aluminum, which has a plus three charge. The polyatomic ion, nitrate, has a negative one charge, and our charges don't add to zero, so I need another nitrate group here. Our charges still don't add to zero, so I'm gonna add a third nitrate group here, and this gets me to a total charge of plus three and minus three, and now my charges will add up to zero. And so my formula will have one aluminum and three nitrates. And the way we show three nitrates is to put NO3 in parentheses and add a three to it there. So when there's more than one of a polyatomic ion, we put it in parentheses and put the subscript outside the parentheses. So the formula of aluminum nitrate is AlNO3-3. Okay, so now it's time for you to practice. In a minute, you'll pause the video and write down these names and then come up with the correct formulas. Remember, just write down the cation with its charge, write down the anion with its charge, and keep adding cations and anions till the charges are the same and the net charge is zero. So go ahead and pause the video now and write the correct formulas for these compounds and then restart the video and see if you did them correctly. So here's the correct formulas for these ionic compounds. Make sure that you check your work carefully. If you're missing something and you don't know why, go back and watch the video again, or come in and talk to your teacher and get some additional help. There are two more videos in the series using Roman numerals and writing names of binary covalent compounds, so be sure to watch those if you have this information down. This is Mr. Cochran signing off.